one of the most rare and significant prehistoric objects I have ever found came from a cultural site located centrally in Prescott, Arizona. What you are looking at is a scarlet macaw representation, which was carved from argillite around 950 to 1,000 years ago by the Prescott culture. Scarlet macaws are not native to Arizona. Rather, they came from pre-Hispanic Mexico or Mesoamerica. Recent research suggests macaws were traded into a major archaeological site called Pocky May. From Pocky May, macaws were further traded into the American Southwest through vast networks. Although this trading system was a primary method, we also believe groups of people traveled directly into tropical regions of Mexico to obtain these rare and valuable macaws. Upon further examination, this rare find carries surface wear on both sides of the drill hole. These wear patterns are round and created a high polish only in these areas. It is my belief this macaw effigy was worn as a necklace decoration between beads of argillite or shell or even both. So what you're looking at here is what I believe to be a very close or an exact copy of the original necklace. Now it's hard to say because we don't have the original one complete and strung together. With that said, this is based on data recovery and what we have found in other archeological examples. So there's two very diagnostic and distinctive traits of the prehistoric Prescott culture. Number one is the use and the heavy use of black on gray pottery. This right here is a bowl that I made and of course fired in reduction. It is an exact copy of a bowl that is now displayed at Tuzagut National Monument. So again, black on gray pottery, heavily used throughout the prehistoric Prescott culture and their region that they lived in and occupied. The second thing is the use of argillite. Argillite was heavily, heavily used in prehistory amongst the Prescott culture. They would grind it down into thin slabs and then trade and distribute it out. So it was traded heavily in the northern Sanawa region and then as far south as the southern Hohokam. So it was an economic commodity. It was also used in elite status. So through burial evidence that we find, we find elite individuals tend to carry more argillite and shell decorations. This necklace carries a sunburst pendant, very common for Prescott culture, Hohokam, and Sanawa groups. Following the pendant, we have Olivella shells. In between the Olivella shells, we have round argillite disc beads. Once again, a very common combination for prehistoric people up here in Prescott, as well as the Hohokam and Sanawa regions. Fetishes are scattered throughout the structure. These are exact copies of ones that we have recovered in data recovery and we have archeological evidence of. Um, a few of them come from a site called Sundown, which is in Williamson Valley, located in Prescott. We have two scarlet macaws as well. The scarlet macaws are exact copies of the original one that I discovered. They are exact in length, width, and thickness. So now that we have discussed some of the remarkable traits and distinctive characteristics of the Prescott culture, I want to show you how to recreate this style of necklace. Now the first step in reproducing and recreating this prehistoric Prescott culture type necklace is to start off with the disc beads and that's because of the labor that's involved. This is by far the most laborsome aspect of this reproduction. So I first start off with raw pieces of argillite. I grind them into flat slabs and then I continue to grind until I have the thickness I desire. So this one's just about ready to go. Okay, so check it out. You can see I have multiple pieces of argillite that are ground down into thinner slabs. I have a bit more work to do. I can do this off camera because it takes up a lot of film time and it's just very repetitive grinding. 
I want to create about five to six more of these larger slabs and that will suffice for this project. But moving forward, I will now show you how to create the individual disc bead. So as you can see here, I have two pieces of argillite with a grid pattern etched on the top, on the surface. Each square represents an individual disc bead. So I take a sharp piece of thin stone and cut out each square, then I'll drill it in the center and then finally round all of the edges into a disc shape. I'll show you how to do that right now. So when you drill these beads, there's a couple different ways to do this. You could either drill them on a larger slab right in the middle of each square and then cut it, or in this case, you can cut each one out and drill them separately. So if I wanted to, I could cut right in the middle and then just drill that. You can see this is what I'm after. These are already cut and drilled and it takes multiple drill bits throughout this process. I'm using a stronger stone. This is a very hard piece of chalcedony. So I just start right in the middle and I drill down. It really doesn't take that much work. As you can see, this is drilled all the way through on both sides. And I'll just finish up each square. And same thing with this piece. All right, I just about hit the end. And you'll see it flip around soon. There we go. Twist it as I pull up and out. There we go. The final step in creating a disc bead is to simply round all four corners of the object. So you can see we have these square pieces that we cut free. And there's two different ways that prehistoric people did this. The first way, and what I'll be using today, is by simply taking a raw piece of sandstone and working all four corners. It's really not that much work. This is such a soft material, several passes will gain significant progress. The second way, and the most time efficient way, is to take a raw piece of sandstone, break it, and up at the top of the break, where it's flat, they would cut in a groove. They would then string the beads together and run the beads inside of that groove. That would work multiple pieces at once. In my case, again, I'll just use a raw piece of sandstone and remove all four corners. As you can see, not that much work and we start to achieve a round disc object. I will continue on. I have quite a bit of work to do. And once I have all of my beads made and complete, I would say probably 100 to 150. I will be right back with you to show you the next step. One nice thing about sandstone is it works much better than sandpaper for this specific task. The natural tendency is to use modern tools, but a piece of sandstone, because it's so rigid, removes more material at a faster pace. Hey everyone, that wraps up part one of this video series. Do me a favor, hit the notification bell to receive our notifications for future videos. Subscribe to the Primitive Life Voice channel on YouTube and also hit the thumbs up button. It really helps us to grow and expand. I look forward to seeing you on part two.